Next Generation AI and Power Platform is changing how you develop low-code applications. Now with Power Platform, you can use natural language to bring ideas to life in a new design experience. With Copilot and Power Apps, describe your app in a few simple words, and Next Generation AI will create your app and help you refine and update it. With Copilot and Power Automate, building flows to automate your world has never been easier. You can start by describing your process in a few simple sentences, and Power Automate will build your flow. With Copilot and Power Virtual Agents, building a complex chatbot to answer and manage internal and external conversations has never been simpler. And with the AI Builder, you have access to the Azure Open AI model and a low-code experience to configure and embed next-generation AI to generate, summarize, classify, translate text, and more in your apps and flows in a few clicks. The future of low-code starts today. Imagine it, describe it, Power Platform builds it. Hello and welcome. My name is Peter from Projectum, and today I will be hosting a webinar about Power PPM, our project portfolio management solution, and ChatGPT, so OpenAI, and how those two combined can give a better experience for the end users. We have roughly 45 minutes uh, to cover a uh, large topic, so uh, I will be speaking a bit fast, hopefully. So if I'm really lucky, you can listen a bit fast as well. Otherwise, this will be recorded and shared afterwards, so you can uh, play it in your own pace uh, afterwards. To kick it off, here's the agenda, as you've seen also in the invite. We have uh, an, a general intro to OpenAI and portfolio management by design, which is our mindset here in Projectum. Then a live demonstration of Power PPM using ChatGPT. We'll be talking a little bit about security and cost perspectives. Uh, also our roadmap for future uh, releases when it comes to AI and Power PPM. And then a short talk around getting started and Q&A. I think Q&A will also be covered along the way. Um, and that's sort of how we uh, see if we can keep the time when it comes to being four o'clock, which is uh, when we're going to end the meeting or the session. So my name is Peter, as mentioned before, and I've been doing Microsoft Project Portfolio Management uh, for the last 20 years almost. Uh, 12 of these years, the last couple of years at least, has been as a Microsoft MVP. Uh, fast track architect, and I've been certified in, in more or less every standard that is on the market when it comes to project portfolio management. Um, so having worked with Microsoft Project in the past on premise to the cloud transition to now having low code, no code platforms um, has been my journey. Um, and that's also why I think that AI is sort of the next switch uh, when it comes to, to a whole new way of looking at, at PPM or SPM, but I'll, I'll get back to that. So. The portfolio management piece is what most are looking for right now when they reach out to us as a product company, uh, that they want to manage their hybrid, traditional or agile portfolios. And inside those can be various types of work. Um, and that's also where we can use AI to help improve the user experience. So I'm going to kick it off by sharing a little bit on how we think um, before we uh, conclude on the AI piece. So to start with, um, down here is where we have teams working together. So more than one person working uh, with another person, that equals a team. Sometimes these are very large, um, and they typically form whatever they do around a piece of work. And that work could be a project, an epic, uh, producing a feature, a task, or whatever it is. Now here we don't really distinguish between uh, agile or traditional uh, work or projects, so to speak. So. That's starting point. Uh, above here, we can then find that people group the work into programs or, or roadmaps and further up the chain into portfolios, hybrid portfolios, product portfolios, strategy portfolios, and much more. But also on top of here, we have an extra layer, which is the C level or the senior management level, where portfolio managers also have to report what they're doing to this level. And the point here, uh, at least according to our minds and the way we do products, is that we need to act as a translator um, to make sure that whatever we do down here, and sometimes people in this layer, they speak uh, user stories or story points uh, or effort or plans versus um, backlogs. So all of this uh, different lingo has to be uh, matured or groomed into one language that can be understood uh, by all at this level up here. And that's why portfolio managers and the PMO function often becomes this translating uh, mechanism um, from whatever people are doing and whatever tools they're doing, 
to a boardroom setting where everyone gets the, the capex, the opex, the timeline and the promises. So to achieve this, um, we have different disciplines that are out of the box in Power PPM. In some ways, you can say everything that ends with management is a process or a discipline um, that should work out of the box to some extent. And then we have all the different features uh, or capabilities that each user would need uh, when using such a tool uh, like Power PPM. So each of these boxes represent a feature or an area which will work out of the box um, and can of course be changed without the use of code uh, because we're using a low-code platform. This is also where you see the AI symbol for the first time in the presentation, which is now part of the standard uh, boxes we have for, uh, for user features. When we then engage typically us or our partners uh, with our customers, uh, we have a design phase where we narrow down which of these items are we interested in um, improving with uh, digital tools like Power PPM. And based on those choices, there can be a variety of different, um, let's say, architectural drawings. One could be that you have Power PPM in the middle, you use Teams, you use uh, Power BI, maybe you use Project for the Web, maybe Jira maybe time for teams for time sheeting and so forth. But this is also where we have the ability to connect to ChatGPT or OpenAI, both in a local setting or a global setting. I'll get back to the difference, uh, difference between those two. Um, so that's the very high level uh, architectural drawing, but that will always look unique depending on the choices you make on the left side. If we zoom in on the AI piece, because that is what we are about to do today, um, we worked uh, quite hard uh, ever since we first heard about ChatGPT and Microsoft buying into it and releasing these, this new service and figuring out how can we connect that into our user experience uh, in the PPM setting. So instead of starting uh, from a forecasting mechanism where we look at big data that we have internally, we did the opposite. We took the user as the core and said, what can we do to improve the project manager's uh, experience in the tool, for instance? Um, and that's uh, less complicated and less uh, risky uh, security wise than it is to uh, to predict things on your own data. So the first thing we did was to figure out what can be time consuming uh, and sometimes rather trivial. And one of these findings was, of course, the scheduling piece. So breaking down the work into tasks uh, or milestones following a certain standard like PRINCE2 or PMI. Uh, and how can we use uh, AI to automatically create the template uh, or the project plan? So uh, moving away from static templates to highly dynamic uh, live generated templates based on the combined world's knowledge and not your own uh, project model that you have created and documented somewhere. Um, the other thing we looked into besides scheduling was um, risk management. So preloading the risk log with uh, most well-known risks for the specific type of project you're about to do whether that be uh, an IT implementation or a wedding that you're going to host or, uh, or doing a webinar like today. Um, so again, lots of findings here where, of course, you have internal knowledge that you can uh, use. So lessons learned from past projects that we see quite often, but where we also see that it's very few people actually using the lessons learned documentation. Um, so if we could enforce that or inject that uh, while we are creating the projects, we believe that that could improve also the experience and the management of the business case as a whole. Um, I'll show this live, of course. Uh, the third ingredient is that you sometimes need access to JetGPT. Uh, most have tried it already. Um, some have a subscription like me because then it's three times faster for 20 bucks. So that was worth it. Um, but it can be annoying having to, to, to go away from the tool to a browser, logging on to OpenAI, writing back and forth, and then getting the data back into the tool. So uh, making ChatGPT available as a service to all your users is possible, almost like a chatbot, uh, where you can, of course, ask it anything, uh, but then quickly copy pasting uh, whatever it comes up with um, while you see it. So those are sort of three areas. And now it's where I'm going to go live. So I'm just going to move out of this screen and over to my demo area, which we have here, and just quickly take some coffee. So we are in Power PPM right now. I have launched it as, um, as an app, so a Windows app, so you can save all your Power Apps as a native app almost, so you don't see the browser at the head, in the header, so you get more space on your screen. Could also work inside uh, Microsoft Teams, uh, which I can't show right now because we are in Teams. Um, 
but anywhere you want to have it, you can use it. So devices like uh, iPhones, Android phones, tablets, and so forth, it will work uh, everywhere. But the real point here is that I've created a project or an initiative, as I call it. And if I open this one up like this, let's go full screen. You see, I have my usual headers here, um, or at least in my demo environment, I have a stage gate model. Um, I can save it. I can also talk to ChatGPT, like I showed just before in the slides. So for instance, when it opens up like this, I can say uh, chat GPT or whatever sort of uh, input you want to make sure it triggers the chat GPT function. So it says, hey, it looks like you need some AI assistance. What do you need? But this is just to have the conversation with chat GPT in the tool. So it could be something like, what should I be uh, concerned about when uh, hosting uh, a webinar, for instance? And then it will do the basics. It will send the question. ChatGPT will render the answer. Here you don't see it streamed live, uh, but it will return uh, with the answer once it's done. So here, and it's pretty accurate, I have to admit, based on what we just went through <laughs> in the beginning, ensure stable internet connection, test your audio, have backup plan, technical issues, and so forth. So it's pretty good at this, and you can, of course, continue the dialogue saying, please present it in a, in a, in a table view or whatever you want. So what can we use this for? I would say anything. Copy pasting stuff from here to the description field, whatever. Um, I think that's where it's uh, limitless what AI can do for us. And, and we are just in the early stages, but this was just a simple example. Um, now, the other thing is that I have created a project here and the plan is to host a webinar for 100 attendees to be held mid-June 23. So let's imagine I go to the timeline here like this. Then uh, what we can do in Power PPM is that we have this pop up when it's a new plan. I can start from scratch. I can pick an existing template that you have loaded into the tool as a PMO or admin. I can also in the old templates like this, see wh what the template looks like. It's rendering it here. And then I can say, yeah, that's the one I need. Pick it or maybe pick several like this and notice the numbering. That's the sequencing in which the, the building blocks will be injected into the plan. This is great. It's fairly new, actually, that we have this offering, but still it's it's probably the old way of doing things when it comes to um, to templates. So the alternative is that you start from AI. So again, here we, we use ChatGPT. What I can do is simply write whatever I want into the input field or copy paste something like a long article or 10 lines or one lines. If we take the one I had just before, which was this, plan to host webinar for 100 attendees to be held mid-June 2023. That could be enough input, and then I could generate that by clicking. So what happens now is that it sends off the question to ChatGPT. Um, there are lots of things we do prior to this uh, question that we do, or input being injected. We do things beforehand to wash the data and to make sure that the output comes in a structure so that it can do what it just did inject uh, the, the answer directly into Power PPM. So this is the first example of where we just write free text, whatever we want. And based on that, we get a plan um, with a, uh, yeah, it's not mid June, it's, gonna end, it's end of June, I can see, which is also fine. We have a starting date. We have some uh, days here, which are the estimated duration. What we have added also is sort of a probability factor. How likely is it, according to ChatGPT at least, that this uh, down here host the webinar will be uh, on this specific date and take a day. Well, that's 100% uh, probable, probable because that is the date we're going to do it. Uh, whereas some other places like how much time does it take to create the content for the webinar? It says 20 days. Well, maybe it's uh, 100 days or two days. It doesn't really know. So it's only 60% accurate. But this is very basic stuff. Essentially, we could bring in much more context. We could have uh, pointers or links back to where the sources where there are more descriptions. I'll show that live because that's how, or later, that's how Bing uh, AI also does it, which I have access to showing you. But this was one basic example. If I were to uh, delete this, I could just do like this, all of it. So then we remove all the tasks and we start again. So just a second. Shouldn't take that long. There we go. So starting from fresh. Um, then we go into the timeline again. And just to give you an idea, we go to start from this AI thing, and now we write uh, Power PPM tool implementation up, uh, done 
in eight weeks generate. And sometimes these replies takes uh, anywhere between, I would say 20 seconds, like we saw before, up to a minute maximum, depending on the amount of tasks you want to also uh, render. Um, I'll get back to the costing and uh, speed and performance. So while we're waiting for this to finish off, we have ChatGPT 3.5, which is what we're using. That's the fastest one. And then we have ChatGPT version 4, which is three times more slow, according to our uh, measurements at least. So we're not using that right now. But it's again, on the other hand, it's more accurate, or it can be more accurate. So what you did, or what we see here now is that we're implementing Power PPM. So even, even ChatGPT understands that it it's actually this tool called Power PPM we are uh, injecting or implementing to our uh, organization. So for that reason, it also adds appropriate task uh, namings uh, right here. But here you can see a plan from, uh, well, uh, first of this year, because I didn't write anything in terms of uh, when it should start or finish um, until, uh, example, yeah, nine days for this one, 18 days here, 24 days there, and so forth. Um, so you could keep going with different examples or writing more context, um, uh, but essentially it's, it's all up to the user what you want to provide, as long as you don't provide something that's confidential. <laughs> we'll get back to that. Now, the other thing, if I go to um, the risk lock here, here we have a risk matrix view, standard and power PPM, but there are no risks. So again, I could just click new and create them one by one uh, uh, and rate them and describe them and so forth. Or again, I could try and pull in the combined world's knowledge from ChatGPT. So if we say add AI generated risks here, I could just paste the same as I had before as an example and use that. So now again, it takes the, the webinar uh, example and tries to load uh, X amount of risks. I'm going to give you another example once this is done, uh, because we can do more tailoring before we um, before we give the input. This typically takes 10 seconds. It's a bit faster. So now we have uh, low atten attendance, equipment failure, poor audio quality, lack of engagement, and so forth. We even have the probability and impact. So if I do a quick refresh and go back, I think the risk matrix is uh, already completed. Well, at least we can see where these different risks are placed. Um, and we could add more risks if we wanted to by just adding add like this one. So let's just try and do a very uh, crazy example saying we also I need uh, five risks related to a wedding. This summer, that's something completely different. So here I limit how many risks it should create so that you can always write like 10 tasks or 15 risks or 100 risks. Uh, or categorize them based on uh, different characteristics like uh, technical stuff and so forth. So now it injected some more risks down here. So now we have something like uh, transportation issues, um, bad weather. So that's probably in the in the wedding bucket and so forth. So again, it's something you need to try out and mature uh, your questions with, like you do with Google, or we, we all did with Google when we first got access to that. But this is the essence of how um, the AI piece works for us right now um, as a standard. And to activate it is, is fairly easy. So I'll get back to how you can get started with this for those of you who are using Power PVM. Um, but I think the real trick here is also for, for those who are watching to understand that we are doing uh, what we can call an enabler, making it easier to interact with ChatGPT. But where you want ChatGPT to help you out, uh, if it's uh, not just risks and, and plans, but maybe financials, KPIs, whatever it is, reading your documents, writing a summary, um, that's where this is like a configuration uh, effort. So hours needed in some ways and not just the product uh, that will drive that for you, um, but, but more on that later. So security and cost. Now, um, the cost is calculated by what is called tokens, the amount of tokens uh, that you're using to generate uh, the answer. Oh, and that actually has to do with both the input you give, the, the different questions that you saw me just showing before. So all combined, that equals X amount of tokens. Um, it's not calculating the letters or the sentences or uh, the, the amount of white spaces or something like that. There is a whole explanation about it uh, at, where you can use this link, an open AI called Tokenizer, where you can actually write in whatever you want and see what does that equal to in terms of tokens. It's a bit technical. Uh, but the example here to make it simple for those who are watching is that uh, create a project schedule with five phases for a global HR system rollout following print two methodology. Now that will work, but this is roughly uh, a thousand tokens. 
That sounds like a lot, but a thousand tokens is actually nothing because that means that you can generate 500 plans based on this input for one USD. So that's the cost that we're looking at right now. But of course, uh, tokens can can explode depending on how many times you interact. Right now, you see me doing a one-off input, getting an output. You could have had a uh, yeah, almost like a conversation going on back and forth, back and forth, and then you pay in, in essentially for the full conversation. Um, but you can limit that and you can max the tokens so you can say this creation of a, of a schedule can never go beyond uh, 5,000 tokens. So that's the way you can control the cost of this. But because it's so low cost right now with the features we have right now, there is no cost for our customers to try this out because we are taking that, that hit. Um, so you can try it out uh, without having to, to worry about the cost of uh, creating plans or risks. So the other aspect is the security point. Um, so many when they see this think it's, think it's great, but there are concerns about uh, what about our data? Uh, can people see it? Are we sharing confidential elements and so on? So the quick uh, intro here is that you saw me as a user ask a question or provide some context to ChatGPT, that's the input. Then ChatGPT creates a response, so that's the output. And it's the response we then inject into Power PPM, which means that the input and the output that is what ChatGPT have now learned about you. So whatever you wrote and whatever it came up with of results, that is what is something that ChatGPT will use to train itself, uh, which is why it's called machine learning. So the machine gets smarter. Uh, and of course, um, that's not, uh, I would say, uh, dangerous at all, unless you write specific uh, NDA breaching elements into your context statement or your input or your question. Then of course you have carried over uh, whatever you wrote to ChatGPT. Um, but in a nutshell, I think don't bring confidential data into your context or input statements. That's the that's the thing you should remember. But I think that also has, it's the same you would think about when you when you look at uh, Google or wherever you type in something, chances are uh, that will be stored somewhere for, for learning purposes. So it's the same as everywhere else when you browse the internet. Um, that's the open AI part. So, um, Probably not, nothing to worry about as it is right now. The other aspect is where we say, well, it's not open AI, it's more local AI. We want to, to run it on our data. Here we have different options. Um, the first one is that Power Apps and Power Platform, which I'm not going to present today, but of course, if you don't know what that is, perhaps you should look at that as well, maybe before this event. Um, but there are out of the box uh, models when you build apps or have your data in Power Apps, such as Power PPM. Um, extracting information, predicting something, categorizing what people are saying, figuring out if it's positive or negative the last time we had a meeting. Um, so these are ready to use AI models. So you don't have to be an AI uh, algorithm expert to use these. You just need data, of course. Um, so that's around as well. So that's safely secure and has been around actually, if I go down here like this since 2019. So it's not new. What is new, on the other hand, is that right now, this is where we are today. We have uh, OpenAI or ChatGPT as well, uh, also in Asia, which is now part of our platform. And that means that we can build a, a sort of chat agents, but um, internally, externally using um, OpenAI. We can create automation flows. So stuff you normally would do in Microsoft Power Automate, we can, we can now create those by just writing what we need. Uh, for instance, send an email to my boss every time this and uh, that person does not uh, timesheet the hours they should, um, then it automatically creates the flows. You don't need to be a flow wizard to create them. So that's more from a configuration aspect, um, but we have it already. So anything from prediction, prediction uh, of your, using your data to creating new apps using AI, uh, for instance, taking the picture of a napkin where you draw up a, a website or a form, an input form, that can now be converted automatically to a power app. Uh, and again, this is early days, so imagine a year from now or two years from now where we then will be uh, and, and what coders are doing at that point in time. Um, and then, of course, the automation flows as well. So something that's already available, most of it in preview, but it's available if you want to try it out. The third option, of course, is a bit more, I wouldn't say tricky, but requires uh, real skills <laughs> also in, um, in big data. This is where we have local AI, for, for instance, really looking at your, your data in a SQL database, so not in Power Apps, and then using that to drive prediction models or machine learning algorithms 
So you can use past information you have to drive better predictions of the future. That's uh, having that this this has to do with deploying uh, what we can say AI into Azure OpenAI Studio, and that's another offering that Microsoft has, but where you need to be pretty experienced in in also Azure to get that up and running. Um, so there are sort of three options today, but if we roll them up, essentially we have the OpenAI piece where we use the combined knowledge of the world uh, to do something better or easier, or we have the other option where we look at our own data. And then we try to predict something on, on that data or we do the combo where it's whatever the world is saying plus what we see internally. But that scenario, of course, would be a local setting where we do not want to share that with the rest of the world. So there are some options you need to, to take into considerations and also the reason for why we started with very lightweight features uh, like creating a project schedule or a risk lock because that's that's pretty harmless uh, for most. Good. Um, the other thing, if you want to go deep or if you have a security expert uh, or responsible in your business, you probably all have. Um, what I like sometimes to, to push back with is that rather than asking me uh, to become an expert in, in uh, AI and security models, maybe we should just ask AI about security. So in this example, actually, I'm using Bing, uh, which is now ChatGPT enabled as well. Uh, so if you write bing.com and if you have signed up, you can actually just hit the chat button at the top. And then what you can do is just write, what are the key security concerns of using Azure OpenAI on my confidential company data? Then it comes up with some suggestions plus some articles. You can click on these and go straight to where the source is so you can learn more, but it keeps going with you. So it tries to help you. And then it says, what kind of data are you planning to use with Azure OpenAI services? Then you can click down here from some pre-selected uh, options or just write, uh, for instance, financial data or uh, resource timesheeting data. And then based on that input, it gives you a new reply saying, OK, if it's uh, personal sensitive like GDPR rules applied, then you have to be careful about this, this and that. So um, the super expert who knows it all by by head uh, is probably not the way to uh, to see this um, because it's a never ending uh, story of um, changes when it comes to AI. So I think the safest bet to learn about security and AI is to ask AI, but using Bing. And just to be specific on why that is, that's because Bing is connected to the Internet. If you write to ChatGPT, logging on to ChatGPT, you will not get any reply that is uh, uh, newer than 2021. But that's not the way to do it. So Bing, uh, talk to Bing, get some, some inputs from Bing, then you can be pretty sure it's uh, up to speed in terms of uh, most recent published articles or studies or documentations. Good. So from a roadmap standpoint, um, ChatGPT came out in November, end of November, public preview. So that's where LinkedIn started to suddenly see uh, 100 updates an hour on the uh, hashtag ChatGPT. Um, we internally in Projectum uh, released a closed preview uh, for partners uh, in between those two points in time. So today and when this was released. But today is where we also have this closed preview where if you are a customer today using uh, Power PPM and you want to have this enabled in test environments or just try it out, uh, just reach out to your partners or us directly and we can activate the schedule creation and the risk lock creation uh, for you. And then soon, uh, yeah, and it's uh, it's just, just says very soon, not specifically when, but very soon we'll have a public preview uh, where everyone will sort of be able to just enable it and then use it for against schedules and risks. The thing we want to do next uh, right now in our little uh, experimental uh, team is something we have tried, so we have a valid case for that it works, and that's actually to take product managers to the next level. Um, we are often asked if we have a Kanban board as an example. So if I just quickly go back here to this tool uh, in Power PPM, we do have uh, down here somewhere yeah, something called products, for instance. And in, if you go into a product like this and open up Power PPM in here, you can have, uh, for instance, uh, an epic board. So that's like a Kanban board of uh, big investments. And for each of these epics, you can also go here, for instance, see all the epics. You could then open one up like uh, this one. And then see, this is the description of it. There are some features that are created in Azure DevOps. Uh, there might be some user stories. So everything that, that's essentially in a Kanban board in a product or Scrum based context. But imagine that we had a good description of the Epic in text. 
for instance, a description or acceptance criteria and so forth. Imagine that being the input and then having ChatGPT essentially creating the full Kanban board for you with proposed user stories that are described, with proposed features under each story, with test uh, ways of doing the test plans, uh, maybe even tasks, maybe with effort based on the team size you have available and so forth. So um, the, the, the link from strategy uh, through to Apex, through to teams doing actual work could be automatically created. Not saying it's, it's super accurate, you might only like half of it and then you just remove whatever you don't need. But just imagine that your Kanban boards are suddenly uh, created for you with the work items. As with today, we have to do a, an event for a webinar like this. Uh, a, just asking, please produce a Kanban board um, that can produce a good webinar where 100 people will participate and look at AI. What do we need to do? And then instead of having a Gantt chart schedule, just get an agile Kanban board. And I think that's that's how we need to think uh, when it comes going to, to, to looking ahead. Um, so now we're probably going to do this as a one off thing. So something you can just enable and have working for you in your product management and Kanban boards. But later, the essence of how we work in Projectum is not to continue to take piece by piece and, and AI activate it because we know people have different needs uh, for AI. So rather we're looking into creating a control. So for those who are technical, we have lots of PCF controls today. That's the Gantt chart, the financial grid, the risk matrix. Each of these are controls and power apps. Um, and we're going to do one for, for AI as well. So it's going to be a lot easier for, for customers uh, or partners um, to just configure easily um, the AI connectivity. Um, so that's that's the right way to do it because then there are no limits to uh, what everyone can do when they have a subscription to um, to Power PPM and, and Power Apps. So that's the roadmap plans, very high level as you can see right now. Um, getting started, we have a few options. One is to uh, of course go to the website. Um, we have already a placeholder for, for ChatGPT where you can read more about it and news will be added there. We have newsletters about it coming out soon as well. We have a Forbes article, which is just about to be released as well, which is great. Um, but the other thing is, of course, to try it out. Uh, reach out to us and we'll activate it for you so you can try it. And thirdly, uh, we can build it today. So if you have uh, a requirement for a specific AI scenario, let's hear about it uh, and build it together um, and launch it or deploy it just for you and not for everyone else. Um, so you get your own way of doing AI. That's definitely also possible today. 